Coming up on the next episode of Painting and Travel, Roger and Sarah Bansimer stop in Willamette, Illinois at the Baha'i House of Worship. Roger paints in one of the nine formal gardens while Sarah views the lovely temple and learns about the faith. Today, Sarah and I are at a very special place. This is the Baha'i House of Worship in Wilmette, Illinois. Lake Michigan is just a couple hundred yards that way. And the city of Chicago is about nine miles south of us. So we're here in these beautiful gardens. We're going to take a little look at the House of Worship in just a while. But for now, I'm going to set up my easel and paint these beautiful rosebuds here that are growing in one of the nine gardens that surround the temple. I have my little French easel here today. It's a half easel. It's very narrow. It doesn't take up much space. I like that, especially when we're traveling. So I'll set that up in just a minute. We'll have some water here. I'm using acrylic paints today, as I usually do. And I've got a small variety of brushes, mainly a few flat brushes called brights, a fan brush, a couple of small pointed brushes for details. I also have my little atomizer here. This helps to keep my paint wet. And I'm working on a masonite board today that's covered with gesso. So let me get this little easel set up here. Right now, Sarah is walking around the gardens here. And I think she's meeting a friend and uh, while I finish getting everything organized here, I think maybe she'll be able to explain a little bit more about where we are in this beautiful structure of the Baha'i House of Worship. I'm so happy you could be here today. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. It couldn't be nicer, even though it's the end of the summer and I know the flowers aren't at their peak, they're still just lovely and the breeze coming off of Lake Michigan I noticed there were a number of students here, and I imagine that to get people that are interested in religion and philosophy and students of architecture. Absolutely, yes. We do a lot of tours for architecture students. The architect of the building was Louis Bourgeois, who was a French-Canadian. And there was um, actually a contest where different architects submitted the design. and. Um, Bourgeois said he saw the design for the temple in a dream. And at the time, he had no idea of how they were going to build it. Um, the technology had not yet been invented, which uh, is the technology that was used to do the building was to do poured concrete panels. And what makes the building glow is that there's crushed quartz um, embedded into the concrete. And so the panels were hung on, on the side of the structure. Um, so the technology had to be developed. And actually, this um, supports another concept of the Baha'i faith. Baha'is believe that science and religion are and should be in harmony. And the use of uh, technology to support sp uh, spiritual and, and exhibit spiritual ideas uh, is an example of that. There are people who come upon it and are drawn to it and, and their jaws just drop when they see it because it really is unlike any other building in the world. What is the main function of the Baha'i House of Worship? Well, like every house of worship, this is a house for prayer and meditation. And this house of worship was built by the Baha'is and it's maintained by the Baha'is, but it was really built as a gift for all of humanity. Anyone, regardless of their beliefs or background, is welcome to come and use the building for prayer and meditation.
Well, it truly is an amazing building, isn't it? And I'm so glad I'm able to sit here in the garden today. We've got some good weather. It's been quite cold lately and a little bit rainy, so we've got a break in all that. Uh, we're not exactly in the middle of the country here, so we've got a lot of ambient sounds around. This is a beautiful neighborhood with lovely homes, so uh, we'll hear a little bit of that noise, but I'm just going to continue on with this beautiful rose right here. I think in order to start my painting, I'm going to put in a background color of just some maybe olive green here and burnt sienna. And I'm just maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm just going to tone this entire board with these green colors. And I'll vary these colors as I go. I'll have some warmer up here and some darker down here. And since this is acrylics, these will dry quite quickly, I believe, especially today since it's quite sunny out here. This board is an eight by 10 inch board, but I've put a little bit of tape around here because I wanted to get a little bit smaller painting. All this brushwork and texture will kind of create a nice feeling among these leaves or sort of the background of these leaves to maybe indicate some out of focus leaves that are back there. So I'm just going to keep this brushwork rather rough. And I think that's all I need. I'll sit here for a couple minutes and let this dry before I start drawing and painting the rose. Well, this is totally dry now. It only took a couple minutes. I took it off my easel and set it in the sun here, but this is dry enough where I can start to paint the rose and not have any of these colors mix in with it. So as you can see today, I'm facing the sun. So that means this rose is backlit. The sun is coming from the other side of the rose and I'm looking at the shadow side. But a lot of the light comes through these leaves and these petals. And when sunlight does that, it becomes much more brilliant than if the sun were just directly on it. When the sunlight comes through these objects, they really have much more brilliance than uh, sun directly on the object. The colors I've chosen today, I've just sort of looked at my subject here and chosen some colors I think will work. Almost all, almost every time I go out, I choose a different palette. And many times it's a very minimal palette. But today I'm using some colors that I can sort of visualize to use in this particular painting, especially all these greens. So I have titanium white, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow ochre. These are three earth colors. And I use those quite frequently. They're good colors. Here I have olive green. It's a color I don't use too often, but it's a nice sort of dull, subtle green. Ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. And phthalo blue is a very strong, rich blue. Just going to mix up a little yellow ochre and white. Maybe a little bit of brown there, just keep it gray. Now a rose is almost like a teacup. Almost has that same shape as a teacup. This would be the cup and as if these, if these petals were opening, then the petals would come out this way and almost look like a teacup shape. But here we're more or less painting the cup, not the saucer. Sort of a simple way to think about that. And I know there are many ways to paint flowers like these. And this is just my method. There are methods where people use just one or two strokes and fill up their brush and they can do some amazing things that way. But I choose to go into this a little bit more, a little bit more deeply to try and see some of the subtleties in that rose. Hopefully I can accomplish that. Now, as I look at that rose, uh, it's definitely not a white rose. It's a very yellowish color. It's always, a problem for artists to know what color things are. And I keep saying that, but I think it's one of the biggest problems that an artist faces is trying to decide what color things are. I do know that one color affects another color greatly. So since this rose is sitting amongst all this beautiful green grass and these green leaves, there's going to be a lot of green reflection 
up, up on the petals. I mix a little bit of green with this yellow ochre. Saturday morning here in Wilmette. You can hear people working on their yards across the street. It's a beautiful residential area right here in Wilmette. And this beautiful house of worship just sits right here like a jewel right amongst, amongst everything. Mix a little bit of blue here, yellow ochre. It's a little bit difficult painting this way because I'm having to stare right into the sun. Painting on location always uh, comes along with a lot of challenges. But along with those challenges, occasionally you get some good rewards. So I like to have a combination of painting on location and painting in my studio. I cut this board down a little bit size here, this eight by 10 inch, I put this tape around it, made it a little bit smaller because I didn't want this rose to be any larger than it is in real life. Uh, when objects are painted that way, they sort of become too monumental for my taste. So I wanted to keep this rose uh, about the same size as it actually is here. Let me reach down and get some cadmium yellow light. Put a little bit of that in here. Now, cadmium yellow light and phthalo blue, which is that really strong blue, makes a beautiful rich green. You just can't get any more brilliant a green than mixing those two colors. So put in some of these rose leaves here. That's a good color. I'm going to save that for the time being and go back and I'm going to mix some darker green and I'll pick up some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and that makes a pretty good dark green. So I think I want to work generally speaking from my darks to my lights. Let me spray this a little bit. These spray bottles are very good to bring with me, but uh, they don't last forever. And as soon as they start to go bad, just have to get another one. Well, here's another thing. When I, whenever I paint roses, I take my little atomizer here and I'll spray these roses. And then I can see the little uh, droplets of water on them, like, like the dew is falling on the roses. So uh, later on, I may put a, a dew drop or two here. And this just gives me a little, indication of what they look like. I'll talk more about painting those little drops of water later on. I'm keeping these leaves quite loose. I don't want to get the painting tight, although that's okay too. That's where you like to paint and sometimes I like to paint that way as well. But today I just want an impression of this beautiful rose garden in this one rose. And I want my focus to be on the rose. So these petals here are sort of subservient to my main focus of attention. So we'll keep these nondescript, so to speak. I've painted a lot of roses in the past. I always enjoy them. In fact, here I can show you some of them now and point out some of the drops of water. I'm not really painting the drop itself. Primarily, I'm painting the highlight on the drop of water and the shadow that the drop of water casts. Drop of water is clear, so you don't see the drop very much. But what gives that its uh, definition is the highlight and the shadow. So I may add that in here later on, or even back in the studio. How about putting a little rosebud up here? That might be nice. Let me see, maybe a rosebud on this side. So I'll drop one right in there. Just start with a nice fine pointed, it's a flat brush, but it has a nice sharp edge on it. I'll lay it in there and just push that brush down and create a rose butter too. Here's a chance to use some of that beautiful, brilliant green again. And I'll be using this because the light is coming around all these objects. So 
the light is uh, not only coming through the leaves, some of these objects that are a little more dense, the light just sort of bends around them. Gives me a nice highlight on the side. These rose stems are quite warm in color. They're almost a burnt sienna, a reddish color. This color right here is pretty good, but I think I want it a little bit darker. And by making it darker up in here, then this white rose, I keep calling it white rose, this off-white color rose, will jump out a little bit more because we will have more contrast. So I'm going to maybe let this dry just a little bit more. It's pretty dry. I'm just put, put a, a darker wash over this so I so this will jump forward a little bit better. I think I can probably do that quite easily, even though this may be still a little wet. Yeah, see? So I look at this now, I can see that the color in this rose is quite dark, especially when I squint my eyes. And look at this, the value of this part of the rose that's in shadow is quite a bit dark. And what really jumps out is the highlights on the edge. So in order to accomplish that, I'll mix up some yellow ochre and ultramarine blue and cut these light areas back in tone just a bit. You know, the Baha'i Faith has many beautiful teachings in the writings, one of the quotes says that, ye are all the flowers of one garden. Talking about humanity. Painting the rose here is quite a nice opportunity for me, almost a statement that goes a little bit deeper than just the rose itself. Years ago, I designed a billboard for the Baha'i Faith that had that very verse on it. it had a lot of children pictured they were all the flowers of humanity. So there we go. There we have that a little bit darker. What I'm trying to do is establish my values here. And even though I try to establish those as quickly as I can, it's probably one of the major hardships, I guess, of putting a painting together. It's to get those values right. If the colors are off a little bit, the painting can still survive. If the values are, are off, then the painting won't look good at all. If I didn't know better, I'd say this, was, this rose was a different rose than when I started, because the light changes so quickly out on location. You know, if the painting doesn't come out, it doesn't come out. Nothing lost, but everything I've had to gain just by being outside <laughs> and experiencing all that we get to experience as we travel around the country. And uh, one of the principles that sort of goes along with that too is a verse that says, work is worship when performed in the spirit of service. And I've always loved that quote. And it doesn't matter how skilled or how unskilled or what type of job that I might be doing, if I do it with that attitude, then uh, I certainly feel pretty good about it. I'll put a little more green down here, especially towards the base of this rose, because all this reflected light from this green grass is hitting the underside of this rose. I'm going to take my little razor blade and my little cardboard box here and scrape off this palette. And then I just put the little scraps of paint there in my box. Cadmium yellow light and white. I'm going to use that because it's a nice pure color. And I'm going to put enough white in that so it doesn't really jump out and say yellow. It just says nice pure light color. And even if I did put oh, too much yellow in there, if it turns out to be a yellow rose, that's okay too. I'm interested in getting the final result of a painting and whether it looks like what I'm actually looking at here is almost secondary. I'm using my subjects 
as a guide, not necessarily to try and copy every little thing off of them. Painting is so much about seeing and interpretation. Just picked up a small pointed brush. Now I'll get some of that canyon yellow and phthalo blue mixed up, which is that very brilliant green. And I will put these little details in. As that sun comes around the side of these leaves, you see a little bit of an edge here and there. I don't want to show the edge of every leaf, but just suggest the edges of a few of these leaves here and there. I can really see how the difference in these colors between the light coming through the leaf and the light coming around the leaf. For instance, here we have light coming directly through this leaf. I just have to point this, it's just kind of interesting to me. And this light is so brilliant green, but the light coming on top of this leaf here, see it's very, it's very whitish color. It just doesn't have much color at all, no, no brilliance. It has a lighter value maybe, but this here is the brilliance. So it's coming through that leaf. I mixed up a little bit of dark green here because these leaves right here cast a shadow. Soften that shadow a little bit. Now I was talking about that light coming through these leaves before. So I ought to indicate some of that in here. I think I'll spray my board here just so when I paint this bright green on here, the paint will flow out just a little bit and soften because I want a nice soft edge. Well, the light's coming through here and there's a lot of shadows being cast by other leaves on the other side. I just take these paintings one piece at a time and try and build the whole thing at once. I don't struggle with one area for very long before moving to another area. I like to keep the whole painting going. One thing that's nice about painting on location, I can kind of stop and have a three-dimensional look at what I'm working with. Can't do that with a photograph. There have been many times that I've painted something that I don't really know what the entire thing looks like. It's especially true uh, if I do nautical paintings, paintings of boats. It's hard to tell which wire in the boat is, you know, in the, on what position. So it's uh, nice to be able to sit here in any circumstances and being able to look at the object in the round. Well, the day has cooperated. The rose has cooperated pretty much, although it's changed its position a little bit. But I took the photograph earlier, so I'll have some reference when I get back to the studio when I want to finish this up a little bit better. One thing I just want to do to finish this, at least on location here, is put a little bit of that sky color in back there. I don't want to mix up just blue and white. I'll mix a little bit of green because I want to keep everything in harmony here. But I want to get some other light areas in here. Once again, I'll spray this. And although I'm not seeing any sunlight behind it, I, I would if I could get down like this, but I can imagine maybe just a lot more foliage back there and some light coming through different parts of it. By adding some of these negative areas in here, it makes some beautiful sort of descriptive passages within the painting. And it can help the composition too, sort of give me a little bit of an abstract look and a little bit better flow to this composition. So I think one of the big lessons, at least for me in painting something like this, is about the reflected light and how all this green so much affects the color of this rose. And we'll do the same thing on the Baha'i House of Worship up there uh, in so many ways. If I look on this side of the House of Worship, 
I'm going to get some cool colors because it's reflecting the sky. If I get on the other side of the house of worship, it will be very much in the yellow tones because the sun's hitting it. So all the light in the world affects everything else. It's kind of like humanity, I guess. We're all related in some way. Well, I think I'll call it quits out here for this painting. But since I took my digital photograph, I'll have a few minutes back in the studio to finish this painting, put a few more touches on it, get it into a little bit better composition maybe, and uh, get out of this bright sunlight, which is very difficult to work in. So after that, uh, I'll sign it, I'll varnish it, and uh, we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.